You're watching America's Forum on Newsmax TV. I'm J.D. Hayworth. And I'm John Bachman. J.D., do you believe that individuals held in contempt of Congress should continue to receive their paychecks, kind of like those put on that paid administrative leave? I, I think it is horrible they're getting paid. And since Congress has the power of the purse, we often think about that in terms of appropriations. I think they ought to withhold pay for people who have been held in contempt. Well, this is an issue for one congressman, Congressman Blake Farenthold of Texas. Let's listen to what he has to say about this. I, I don't think we should be, Mr. Holder should be here. He's in contempt of this body. I've called for his resignation. I've sponsored articles of impeachment. And this week I'm going to be introducing legislation that would prevent federal employees who are held in contempt of Congress or who fully fail, or who fail to fully comply with congressional subpoenas uh, not be paid their taxpayer funded uh, salary. Well, on Tuesday, the Contempt Act was introduced by Congressman Blake Farenthold of Texas. The proposal would halt the payment of officials held in contempt of Congress. During the congressional hearing last week, Farenthold said the Attorney General, Eric Holder, should be in jail after refusing to comply with the House Committee's subpoena for documents related to the fast and furious gun running operation. The House Oversight Committee voted last week to hold former IRS official Lois Lerner in contempt of Congress for refusing to answer questions at a pair of hearings about the agency's political targeting of conservative groups. Farenthold's bill will prevent current and future federal employees from continuing to collect their taxpayer-funded salaries while held in contempt of Congress. Uh, the bill would not apply to Lois Lerner, who retired last fall. And that's quite simply because of the admonition of the Constitution, Congress shall make no ex post facto laws. Sure. That's over and done. But here to talk about his proposed legislation and some new revelations involving the aforementioned Lois Lerner, we are pleased to welcome by telephone Texas Republican Congressman Blake Farenthold. Blake, welcome back to America's Forum. Happy to be with you. Now, Blake, before we get to your specific bill, I, I'm, I'm curious, we're getting more reports about emails from Lois Lerner to the Justice Department suggesting criminal prosecution of conservative groups. What have you found on your committee as you continue to offer oversight on this burgeoning scandal? Well, this is why we need Lois Lerner to uh, testify so we can learn exactly what was going on. And I can't believe that a mid-level IRS employee on his or her own uh, could make all of this happen, happen. I think this goes much higher than we all think, but we'll never know unless we can get Ms. Lerner to testify. Or at least it'll be much harder to find out. Well, now let's return to the intent of your legislation, Blake. It seems uh, fairly straightforward. If people are held in contempt of Congress, there, there goes their pay. Uh, a different way to use the power of the purse strings, eh? Well, if I were in contempt of my boss in the private sector, I don't imagine I would be getting my paycheck uh, very long either. Unfortunately, it's much more difficult to fire federal employees than it is in the uh, private sector. So let's get this law in place that says if you're not cooperating with Congress, who's basically the board of directors of the United States, uh, you don't get paid. Well, let, let's talk about it. You referenced it in your remarks, the whole situation with Eric Holder. And, Blake, you were quite outspoken, saying that the Attorney General of the United States should be in jail. Now, we have seen this Attorney General basically uh, thumb his nose at, at Congress. We have seen him uh, insult your fellow Texan, uh, Judge Louis Gohmert, the other week in a hearing in front of the Judiciary Committee. But when all is said and done, do you believe that President Obama will follow through in this scandal the way he did on, on uh, Fast and Furious and, and the gun smuggling issue where he just said, oh, oh, this is all under executive privilege? In other words, despite your frustrations with Eric Holder, do you expect him to skate given the, uh, the machinations of his boss, the President of the United States? Well, listen, this administration has got the uh, stalling and delaying and stonewalling down uh, to a fine art. They are the masters at it. They're doing it in all the investigations uh, that uh, are in the headlines. Benghazi, Fast and Furious, the Lois Lerner IRS scandal. Uh, they, they realize that they can delay uh, long enough, he'll eventually have term limited out of office. 
Well, uh, let me let me follow up on this uh, a little more deeply. There's another power of the purse, and, and uh, I, I think that your proposed legislation is absolutely vital. But there's something else that can go on, at least in terms of the House appropriations bills, and that is to start to to chip away at funding for the attorney general's office within the Department of Justice to uh, to uh, say there are going to be consequences in terms of the administration of the job. In other words, to put pressure on that way. Have any of your uh, colleagues in appropriations moved forward with anything to ratchet down uh, the spending and the appropriations bills to the Justice Department? Well, that's one of the things that I'm hoping to accomplish with this Contempt Act bill. Is you know it could rather than passing on its own, uh, a sentence or two out of it saying if you're in contempt you don't get paid could be put in every appropriations bill and become enacted that way. So there are more more than one ways to make this happen. Uh, the problem with using the power of the purse is we've seen that we've defunded specific jobs within the administration and then they basically rehire the same person with a different title and add another responsibility, let's say counting paper clips to it, and they try to work their way around the extent of Congress. Well, Congressman John Bachman here, and I want to ask you real quickly, when I switch topics about a minute to go here, get your thoughts real quickly on the proposed Comcast Time Warner merger. Do you believe the government should be open to, the, to this deal, and you know, especially considering uh, NBC, the owner of Comcast and their political leanings uh, and, and what we all know? Do you think it would create more of a political bias than we already have? Well, it's they don't compete in a lot of markets, which is really, from an antitrust standpoint, the legal way that it could potentially be blocked. I guess you could talk some vertical integration, but you know, how much do you want the government telling the private sector what they can and can't do, regardless of what the politics of the parent company is? So you wouldn't be yeah, concerned about the, the prospect of a, sort of a monopoly here, maybe not a technical monopoly, but less choice for the American consumer? Well, again, there very few markets where you have a choice between Time Warner or Comcast. Uh, so, and again, not, unless there's a legal basis for something, I don't want the government uh, expanding their power. All right, very good. Uh, we'll leave it there. Congressman Blake Farenthold, Republican of Texas, we thank you for your time. What about the idea? People held in contempt of Congress not getting their paychecks. You can tell us what you think about it via Twitter at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum.